first clings to every breath of the homo habilis tribe, their wobbly two-legged steps dragging through cracked earth. Death isn't a fear here, but a constant whisper in the dry wind. They tracked the large elephant for days and have finally brought it down. Now they stand frozen around the beast as it shudders one last time. The elephant has fallen, its massive body still warm, and a group of men gathers beside the dead creature. Their ape-like black hair matted with sweat as they grip sharp stone tools to begin butchering, eyes scanning the horizon for lurking predators. A shout cuts through the air, and two men grapple in the middle of the field. One defends a scrap of elephant meat. The other snarls, their thin bodies tensing as the rest of the tribe watches, some edging closer to intervene while small creatures dart between their feet. A band of apes swings from nearby tree branches, pausing to chatter at the homo habilis below. Their movements quicker than the tribe's wobbly steps, and the humans freeze, unsure if the apes mean threat or curiosity. A slow-moving turtle creeps across the field, its shell glinting in the sun, and a young tribe member kneels to watch, forgetting the thirst for a moment, as the reptile inches past, while a bird swoops down to peck at the ground nearby. The tribe's men lead the way through tall grass, their primitive clothes, torn animal hides, brushing against the blades, and they pause often to listen for danger, hands resting on the stone axes at their sides as local fauna rustles in the distance. The desert sun blazes overhead and a lone turtle crawls across the sand, leaving a faint trail, while a homo habilis man pauses to stare, his dark skin glistening with sweat, before hurrying to catch up with the rest of the group. A young boy with a broad nose wanders a small patch of wild greenery, his ape-like hair sticking up in tufts, and he plucks a small berry to taste, eyes widening at the tart flavor as a butterfly flutters past his shoulder. Dusk paints the sky orange and the tribe huddles near a fire, listening to the elder recount tales of a giant turtle that once led their ancestors to water, the story weaving through the night as crickets chirp, and a wolf howls far off. A group of monkeys marches across the field, their tails swinging, and they stop to steal a few berries from a bush, not noticing the homo habilis watching from behind a tree, their wobbly stance making it hard to stay hidden. A cow-like creature stands still as a group of monkeys climbs onto its back, chattering and pulling at its fur, and the beast shakes its body gently, trying to dislodge them, while a homo habilis woman laughs softly from a nearby rock. A rhino trundles through a grassy clearing and a group of men cling to its thick hide, their primitive clothes flapping in the wind as they guide it toward the tribe's temporary camp, hoping to use its strength to move a fallen log. A man climbs onto the back of a large turtle, his legs dangling over its shell, and he holds on tight as the reptile eases into a shallow stream, the cool water washing over his feet while other tribe members cheer from the bank. Two women sit astride an elephant as it wades through a river, the water reaching their knees, and they laugh as the elephant sprays water with its trunk, their ape-like hair getting soaked while fish dart around the beast's legs. A small group of homo habilis climbs onto a giant turtle's shell, their hands gripping its edges, and they ride slowly across a muddy field, using the turtle's size to avoid sinking into the muck while birds circle overhead. A crude boat, made of tide logs, floats on a river, and a group of men sits atop it. Using wooden paddles to steer, their primitive clothes dripping with water as they head toward the opposite bank where fruit trees grow. The tribe gathers around a turtle that has stopped near their camp, their eyes wide with curiosity, and an elder touches its shell gently, murmuring a quiet prayer, while children reach out to tap the hard surface. Night falls, and the elder tells the story of the jungle guardian, a spirit said to watch over the tribe in the wild, and he gestures to the trees where owls hoot, making the children huddle closer their fear fading into wonder. A group of men with long matted hair stands in a field, 
their heads tilted back to watch a flock of birds fly south. And they mutter to each other, wondering if the birds' migration means colder days are coming while a rabbit hops past their feet. A man with a thick beard and long hair stands on a rocky outcrop, scanning the horizon for signs of water, and he raises a hand to signal the tribe when he spots a glint of a river, his wobbly stance steadying with hope. A man in a tattered animal hide costume stands next to a gnarled tree. His face painted with clay, and he chants softly to call for rain, the rest of the tribe watching in silence as clouds begin to gather in the sky. A group of men kneels beside a large skull, likely from an ancient beast, and they trace its teeth with their fingers, wondering what creature it belonged to, while a small lizard scurries across the bone's surface. Two men sit on a pile of dry wood, their backs leaning against each other, and they sharpen stone tools while talking in low voices, the sun setting behind them, casting long shadows across the ground. The desert sand burns underfoot, and two men stand bare-skinned, their ape-like hair offering little protection from the sun as they debate which direction to take, squinting at the hazy horizon for any sign of water. Two horses rear and snap at each other in the middle of a field, their manes flying, and the Homo habilis tribe steps back to watch, unsure if the fight will end soon, or if they need to move away while a fox hides in the grass to observe. A man stands shirtless in the desert, his dark skin glistening with sweat, and he presses a hand to his parched throat, scanning the dunes for any sign of a spring, while a vulture circles high above, waiting for weakness. The elder speaks of The Last Stand, a story of their ancestors fighting off a pack of wolves to protect their young, and he holds up a chipped stone axe, the tribe leaning in, their eyes wide with respect for those who came before. A group of young men with thick, hairy bodies walk through a forest, their steps more steady than the elders' wobbly ones, and they carry fresh fruit in woven baskets, talking loudly as they head back to camp, eager to share the food. A herd of zebras trots across the field, their black and white stripes blending together as they move, and the homo habilis pause to watch, not daring to hunt such a large group, while a lion lies in the grass, waiting for the herd to pass. The tribe's men carry bunches of bananas in their arms, their primitive clothes stained with fruit juice, and they walk back to camp, laughing as a monkey tries to steal a banana, swatting at the creature playfully. A shirtless man stands in the desert, his hands on his hips, and he sighs in relief when he spots a small patch of green ahead, knowing it means water, and he waves to the rest of the tribe, urging them to hurry. A group of men sits on a grassy hilltop, their legs dangling over the edge, and they look out at the valley below, pointing to a river in the distance while a breeze blows through their ape-like hair, cooling their sweat. A man with a broad face and large nose squats by a stream, cupping his hands to drink, and he smiles as the cool water quenches his thirst, not noticing a small fish swim between his fingers. A man stands in a field next to a large buffalo, his hand resting gently on the beast's side, and the buffalo snorts softly, not seeming to mind a human's presence, while birds perch on the buffalo's back to pick at insects. A lion stands in the middle of the field, its golden mane glowing in the sun, and it stares at the Homo habilis tribe, who freeze in their tracks, unsure if the predator will attack or walk away while the wind carries the lion's scent. A mixed herd of creatures, deer, rabbits, and small antelope, walks across the field, their steps light, and the homo habilis hide behind trees, watching quietly, not wanting to scare off the wildlife that shares their land. A group of homo habilis walks across a dry field, their feet kicking up dust, and they pause often to rest, their wobbly legs tired from days of walking, while a hawk flies low, searching for prey in the parched grass. The tribe stands in a field, their eyes fixed on a distant storm, and they murmur to each other, hoping the rain will come soon to end their thirst, 
while a child tugs at an elder's primitive clothes, asking if they'll be safe. A monkey sits in the shade of a large tree, its tail wrapping around a branch, and it grooms itself, not paying attention to the homo habiles walking past, who are too focused on finding food to bother the creature. A man with a beard and long hair stands in the branches of a tree, his hands gripping the bark, and he looks out over the forest, calling down to the tribe when he spots a group of deer, his voice loud and clear. A group of monkeys sits on the ground, their legs crossed, and they eat nuts that cracked open, chattering to each other, while a homo habilis child creeps closer, curious to see how the monkeys open the hard shells. A monkey sits on the ground, holding a piece of wild fruit in its paws, and it takes a big bite, juice dripping down its chin, while a small bird hops closer, hoping for a scrap, and the monkey flicks a piece of the fruit toward it. Two birds perch on a branch of a fruit tree, their feathers bright, and they peck at the fruit, some pieces falling to the ground, where a homo habilis woman picks them up, smiling at the free food. A group of men sits under a large tree, their backs against the trunk, and they share a piece of dried meat, talking about the day's hunt, while a breeze blows, carrying the scent of nearby flowers. A group of monkeys walks along the edge of a river, their feet splashing in the shallow water, and they stop to drink, while the homo habilis watch from the opposite bank, not wanting to get too close to the playful but unpredictable creatures. A man with a thick beard stands in the river, the water up to his waist, and he dips his hands in to splash his face, cooling off from the sun, while a fish swims past his legs, making him laugh. A group of homo habilis swims in the river, their primitive clothes left on the bank, and they splash each other, forgetting their worries for a moment, while a group of ducks floats by, quacking softly. A herd of elephants swims in the river, their trunks held high to breathe, and they move slowly, creating waves that rock the homo habilis who are swimming nearby, making the tribe members laugh and shout. A narrow river cuts through the middle of the field, its water clear, and the homo habilis gather at its banks, drinking greedily and washing off the dust of their journey, while small creatures come to the water's edge to drink too. Thank you for joining Homo Habilis History Hub on this journey. If you found this story meaningful, please support us by liking and sharing the video. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to continue exploring the grand chapters of human history with us. Goodbye, and we'll see you on the next journey through time.